What happens when you get into debt? Get out now. No, Come no, back no, with please. the police officer. Don't force me. You calm down. And you can't. I haven't got any money. Or won't pay it back. Get off on my property. In this series, we meet the people who are losing their homes. Hello, would you like to open the door? I've got 24 hours to find somewhere else to go. Their cars. Can you pay this yes or no? I can't go with me now. I'm not going to take your cars off. And their possessions. Can't afford to pay the rent, but £700 telly. <sighs> We meet the people who are owed money. Just got taken advantage of, big time. And the people whose job it is to collect it. I don't want to touch that. Don't panic. Because when you can't pay, they'll take it away. I will start unplugging and uh, get things wrapped up for transportation. You pay me, and then I'll start. people in Britain are having difficulty finding affordable housing. According to the latest research, more than 112,000 people declared themselves homeless in England last year. Homelessness and squatting are on the rise. It's 6.30 a.m. in central London. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill, Steve Pinner and his son Ben have a High Court writ, instructing them to evict squatters from a five-storey office block. The squatters took over the property about six weeks ago. Neighbours have been complaining of all-night parties and antisocial behaviour. In a situation such as a squat, tensions will always be running high, so the whole thing is going to be volatile, potentially violent and certainly noisy. Squatting in a non-residential building isn't a crime, but Paul's asked the police to attend this eviction. According to the police intelligence sources, there could be as many as 70 people here. And the actual place is quite a big building. It's like a squatter's travel lodge. Two security consultants have also been drafted in to provide the enforcement team with backup. If it all, like, war breaks out, we've, yeah. we've got the advantage that we can just walk away yeah. and then, you know, yeah. regroup. Withdraw, regroup. That's right, and, so uh, there's no yeah, heroics. To fight day. We've got yeah. kit in the van, we yeah. can cut the doors off if we need to. I'm going to get Doris. Doris is an intricate part of our team. We've had her for some time now. She's um, only four foot high, slim, and very effective. This job will test the team's 40 years of combined experience to the limit. You need to think what's going to be behind the door, what are we going to be up against? It's on a bigger scale, there's more people inside, we don't know, is there going to be needles? Is there going to be weapons? We don't know what's going to be in there. We're High Court Enforcement and we come to repossess the property. So, can we have a chat? Uh, There's no props in Hello? Did you open the door for us? OK, let me, let me just explain something just quickly. We've actually come from the High Court and there is no notification of us arriving. So that's the fallout. No, I mean, just let us in. We're, we're quite happy to just wait around until you get your stuff together. Yeah, that's OK. They'll all wake up. We, we don't have a problem. Honest. Trust me. Do you want to do it? Other than that, do I have to open it? I don't really want to open it. No, I don't. Please don't make the mistake of barricading the door, cos I'll come through very quickly. Steve's softly, softly approach doesn't seem to be working. Time for plan B. What's she going to do? Barricade the door. OK. You've got your small bar pump on there. Right, go. Go lower, go lower. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, keep them talking here. Steve hatches a plan. Hello. Sorry. Yeah. 
That's OK. But we will need you to stand back, because if you don't open the door... Paul managed to talk through him the ladder box, and then uh, Ben and I went round to the back door. Mind your fingers, because it can go. I'll pull it. The team fight their way past a barricade of mattresses and bikes. There is a complete in there. They have no idea what reaction their early morning wake-up call will trigger. Good morning, Baker Baker. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Quick, get yourself together, yeah? Good morning. Could we uh, start to get your stuff together for us? Good, 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 good lad. Good. Thank you. Good morning. Would you like to start to pack your stuff up, please? <coughs> Thank you. You all just stay on the same. So far, so good. Good morning, gentlemen. Get that camera out. You didn't ask me no. You didn't ask for no. Whoa, 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 whoa. You whoa, didn't whoa, ask for no. Yeah. 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 First warning, first warning. Wait, first first warning. He's still recording. Oh, 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 hey, hey, okay. This is only the first floor. The enforcement team have another four stories to clear. Would you let me talk? Why do you have to be here? Like, we're would, human beings. Would you, let me, be like would you let me talk? Yes, OK. Good lad. Enough. OK, thank you. Know, you. Understand that from us it's our job that, you know, we're instructed what to do. Come on. Shh, shh, shh. Hey. Hey. Come on. Sorry, man. No, no, no. The officer I spoke to, yeah, was really nice. It's yeah. A sergeant. He's and he's probably here and as he's well. Yes, but he said he's going to he said he's going to do his best to yes. find out what's going on okay. so we don't have to cause Obviously, you this problem okay. and then we can leave. Okay, you understand. We're here now. There's no pressure. We're not rushing you. We'd okay. like you to get your stuff together. And we'll it's going to take a few because we've got it kids here as well. We've got no, people, you no, know, wait, wait. Here, listen, man. listen. It doesn't matter. It takes as long as it takes. Okay. All right. Fair enough. It's all right. Fair enough. Thank you. No problem. We're only human. That's all. Yeah, sure. I might be homeless, but I'm a human. That, I'm, I'm not a bad. At person. the end of the day, I'm yeah, not a bad person. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I'm just a human being. That's hey. Paul, Steve, and Ben comb the building floor by floor. They have yet to discover just how many people they're dealing with. the door please. We're taking our stuff. Let okay. Out time. Okay, okay. <laughs> You're all right, you got no more stuff. Hey me? Yeah. Loads of stuff. No, so no, no, no. Individual offices have become private bedrooms and each floor has a kitchen and bathroom. Good morning. You need to get your stuff together to start to okay, make a room. there's no one in there. I've got to get all these people's stuff downstairs. Right, I've got pack clothes. OK. It's not really in there. Yeah, we just need oh, to... Obviously, we need to check, check all the rooms. Um, I'm afraid you're being evicted. Right now? Yeah. OK. Sorry about that. Sorry. So if you can start getting your stuff together. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm late. That's fine. There could be a dog here, so be careful. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody OK? Just so you know that we have to do this today and, you know... We just want to do it as nice as we can, no problems. On a residential, we have a policy of giving people an hour or so to remove their personal belongings. In a squat, it has to be scaled up because everybody's got mattresses, chairs, tables and other paraphernalia in probably 20 or 30 different rooms. They understand the situation they've got to leave today and they're gradually getting their selves, their belongings, their animals together. And we're starting at the top and gradually work our way down and just flush them out. I hear the parties on the weekend are quite good. Um, excess of 200 people on the weekends. We've got our own bar, DJ box. It's all set up, it's well set up. 
But at the end of the day, the amount of damage in there for the landlord, we're talking maybe 100,000 plus in damage. Every wall's got a bit of graffiti, every wall's got a bit of damage. Electric doors are broken, a £60,000 lift's broken. You never know it's going to happen again. If they can find a way in, they'll find a way in. I believe the landlord is now actually going to put security in the building to hopefully prevent that. So um, we're really done. Once they're out of the building, we're done, and it's then down to him to do his part and keep his building secure. Out on the street, all the activity has alerted the attention of local residents. Well, it was hell. I ain't gonna lie, it was noisy. They had me up, I had to tell them off a few times. All hours of the night. The music and then the flashing lights out the window. It's a free party. <laughs> oh, a piano. Oh, yeah, everything. God. Everything. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, you do see life. <laughs> oh, it's good from here for you. Three hours after the enforcement team arrived and the top floors of the building are clear. What we're going to do is we need to check, just check all the cupboards, open any cupboards that are open, and okay. then this floor can be sealed. OK, let me do the uh, top one first. Yeah, here. by all means, yeah. Is that your one? Oh, it's OK. I just didn't want the dogs running away, that's all. Good luck, lads. From here on. If it's empty, yeah, why are you going to let it rot when someone could be in here living instead of being on the streets? Uh, we can't afford to have housing. I'm English. I can't get housing. It's a big family. Everyone's just part of a community. Everyone helps each other out. Everyone looks after each other. I'm a translator. English. I want to get back into work. But at the moment, it's a bit tough. But I'm always on the move. It's taken four and a half hours, and the building is finally empty. That's been screwed shut. They're all locked. Every floor's been screwed shut. It's all been quite amicable. They did what they did. They've all cleaned out. And they've gone. We had the last check of It's all locked. Done. All, all, all locked. done. OK, let's secure That's the building then. That's. <laughs> Locksmith's job, not ours. Some of the people we come across, they choose to squat as a preference rather than a need. But it's never easy putting someone on the street, regardless of the background or the situation. In Stoke-on-Trent, High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken is working with trainee Ian Taylor. They're on their way to collect a debt of £2,800. It's owed for damage to a hire car. Well, then, mate, off you go. Stuart and Ian's High Court writ instructs them to collect the debt in full or remove possessions from the debtor's home and sell them to cover the debt. Wait for the sofa to come flying through the front window just as I look in. Hi. He's not in. Right, we're High Court Enforcement. We have a High Court writ in his name. Are we able to have a quick chat about it? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, OK. Are you able to get him on the phone? No, he's gone now. Right, OK. Why? What's happened? I don't really know what to do, who to ring. Please get them on the phone, raise some funds. If not, we'll be removing goods. 
nine times out of ten, once somebody is rung saying there's two, there's two gentlemen here um, to talk to you, you tend to find that people do try to get home as quickly as possible. The defendant's wife calls her husband at work. I need to speak to this is his wife or yeah. Thank you. On the home number, yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Unable to get hold of her husband, she calls another family member for help. Listen, I've got these guys here. Who are you, sorry? We're High Court Enforcement. High Court Enforcement? They've come to, like, take me assets and I don't know what to do. Can you come now? Please. I don't know what to do. All right, all right, thank you. Bye, bye. My nephew's coming. Stuart's next step is to take an inventory of everything in the house. The inventory of goods is a list that we take of the assets that are on the property that we are looking to seize should the balance not be paid. You don't want to be taking anything that is um, going to risk their quality of life, on it, especially on uh, a residential. We can't take the settees or the, or the table and chairs that they use to eat their meal on. You can't take the TV, if it's the only TV that's in the property. You can't take the, the washing machine or the dishwasher or the cooker um, uh, because they need that for their, for their quality of life. The debtor's wife insists that her husband has arranged for the debt to be paid off monthly following the county court judgment. But Stuart and Ian's high court writ confirms that's not the case. I know it's been dealt with, We're gonna, he's going to be paying monthly, yeah? Right, but the we problem is pay. it's now gone to the High Court, it's no longer a CCJ, it is now a High Court writ. What can I do today? <clears throat> I can't pay the full amount? I know I can't. How much is it, £1,000 or something? It's £2,807.53. And, and you want to take over £2,000 today? Yeah. Yes. We're not rich people. Yes. Yeah, I've got seven children. Yes, yeah. that's understandable. So, I haven't got it. I swear, I don't have got it. No. Minutes later, two family members arrive. How much? How much can I give you? How much can you get? That's the question. Because in theory, we're here for the full amount. Can we try to do five hundred quid? Five hundred quid. It's been more than that. It's three grand debt, nearly. Yeah, I know. Which shouldn't be here. This should be at least a grand. There's no chance. There's still no sign of the debtor. But more relatives are rushing to his wife's rescue. This is my brother. Is it your brother, is yeah, it? Yeah, this is my brother. We have a high court writ. Yeah, it's... Uh, my ID. High court writ, mate. There you go. Where's your ID, mate? Sorry? Where's your ID? Taxi, taxi, taxi. No, I've been standing. No, ID, taxi. Standing all morning, mate. Hey, taxi, I would like to see you. Hang on, no, you can. Let me have a look. Keep hold of it. There you go. Right, taxi. We're down. asking you nice to taxi. It's all right, mate. I'll stand. Oh, you stand. You take yeah. a seat, mate. Yeah. No, you, you play bad cop. You play good cop. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't work no, like don't, that. Don't, don't do that to me, mate. Don't do that. When something comes to the door, and if it involves a partner, the friends, or family, um, people do get quite bad tempered. They'll lose a little bit of patience with us because they didn't think that this would be coming to their doorstep. These guys are saying that they're going to take assets. Yeah, right. What, in the house? Mm. <laughs> yeah. You should have opened the door to them, number one. And number well, two, I didn't know. Number two, kicking them out isn't a problem, by the way. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to have to leave. They can't come here and stop picking stuff up. And just kick them off. They can sit here, they can wait for your husband. And that smirk on his face will go in a bit. If That's he tries to do it. Do that, mate, you'll be arrested. Please don't stop fighting. Do Look, if you phone the police, they will tell you that we are allowed yeah, to do exactly that. We've got trouble in the community. Just make a couple of phone calls. There's going to be problems for you, boys. OK, so you guys have to make a decision. Like I said, it's either payment or goods will be removed. Sorry? It's either payment or the goods will be removed. It's going to be difficult. How is it going to be difficult? Well, when you stop putting your hands on the LK, you mate. Because you're not taking anything. You know. Like I said to you, again, here in this situation, in this community, you're going to be causing more problems. You're going to be flipping right. We don't want that. Stewart's heard enough. Emergency witch service. Can I have the police, please? Police? Yes. I've been threatened with acts of violence should I remove goods within the community, i.e. there are probably going to be more people turning up should I start removing goods. I need police assistance due to breach of the peace. I need someone here sharpish. The police have turned around and said that they've got no one they can send out to us. Now he calls the office. Andy, you're all right, mate. 
Yeah, it's a bad one, mate. Middle of a busy street, everybody knows everyone else. We've got about 20 of them in the house, th threats of violence. Stuart's aware that they may have to accept the wife's original offer of £500 and set up a payment plan. I don't go into somewhere thinking, oh, I'll get 25% and then get the rest on three weeks' terms. It doesn't happen like that. I'm there to get the full amount, if not the next best option, which could be a payment plan. Another friend arrives to talk the family through their options. Can you all go into the front room? Yeah. The friend helped the debtor fill out the original county court forms, arranging for the debt to be paid off monthly. But it turns out they were not returned in time. The letter that Barbara sent, was it late? Yeah. How many days? I don't know. How would you know it was late? Because it came back. When it came back, how, why did it come back? That's what I don't because it was late. You have to do it within 14 days. If you've got it late, you get flipping shafted. And that's our fault. You know what I mean? If anything belongs to like these sofas, yeah, that's very They're mine. No, they're mine. I paid them. What's, what's the best situation you Let's see what we can do. Before you go. OK, can we please get rid of them? So, can we try and get £500 together out yeah, of come on. his pockets? And then we'll be on our way. Now it's clear that £500 is the best offer they'll get. Stuart calls the office to arrange a payment plan with the claimant. All right, it's all right. Stuart suggests £100 a month to clear the remaining £2,300. Right, they've accepted the uh, £500 a day, £100 a month, which is a good sign. Um, uh, so let's go in, get that arrangement form signed, and then we'll be on our way. I need £20. Mm -hmm. no, I need £20. £20. Bob is giving you £20. It's good for this gentleman to come down because this gentleman helped my brother-in-law fill out yeah. some forms. Yeah, yeah. And it was good because when he came down, he says, there's nothing you can do. Now, when it comes from somebody who's on your side exactly. saying there's nothing you can do, yeah. then straight away you start thinking in that the egos can go straight down and yeah. you can start saying, you know what, there's nothing we can actually do now. An hour after Stuart and Ian arrived, they finally get their hands on some cash. I've got £500 for you. Give me a quick scribble there, and then we'll be on your way. And I wish you all the best. See you later. Oh, well, another arrangement. It's not the paid in full we wanted, but at least we got an arrangement. At least the client's happy. Something, yes. Considering it's probably uh, a little bit hot, yeah. hot in there at one point. A recent report reveals that the number of people renting from private landlords and applying for housing benefit is skyrocketing, with 1.65 million claims made last year. High Court Enforcement Agents Steve Pinner and Paul Bowhill, along with trainee Phil Short, are in Enfield, North London. Third floor on the left-hand side of the door, I think. Their next case appears to be a routine eviction due to rent arrears. The High Court writ they carry instructs them to evict the tenant and collect £5,800 in unpaid rent today. Someone in the lights on. Somebody, Gabby. Hello. We're from the High Court. We have an eviction order for this property. Do you understand English? Is there somebody here who does? We always run up against language problems. It's very stressful for them because they have someone banging on their door, shaking a piece of paper. They don't know who we are, what we are, and what authority we have. The woman who's named on the writ fetches her husband. Yes. Morning. Hello, sir. 
Yeah, we're High Court Enforcement Officers. You speak English, do you? Yeah. Yeah, we have an eviction order here to take possession of the flat today. Today? Yes, no. Abdi and his wife knew of their pending eviction but they hadn't realized it would happen so suddenly. We are the bailiffs, but we're from the High Court. The couple live in the flat with their five children. They are expecting their sixth any day now. My wife, she's pregnant. She's, anytime she can have baby tonight, today, now, <laughs> anytime soon. When we got there, the, uh, the young lady was heavily pregnant and you know our piece of paper tells us that they've got to go yet she could have a baby at any time you know how how quickly can the council do something we we don't have the authority to let them stay there paul explains that abdi and his wife have two hours to pack up the family's belongings two hours to go but I'll, I'll still have enough. We we'll have to get funds to take our things out. I do There's understand that. You can yeah. come back again. I can come back again. Yes, of course you can. You can collect whatever you need to last a few days. But it's not fair. I've got uh, 10,000 uh, things inside here. It's like this purpose. And the TV. I cannot take them out, you know. We cannot take within two hours. You have to call funds. No, no. I do understand. No, I understand that. Mm. I'll give you my card. Uh -huh. which is there, uh -huh. you can ring me uh -huh. and you and I can make an arrangement uh -huh. for you to come back here with a van uh -huh. and take the rest of the stuff. So you're not going to give the keys to the landlord? We're not going to give the keys to the landlord. We've got yes. the keys. OK? That'll be fine. The High Court writ also instructs Paul to collect the £5,800 in unpaid rent and fees. There isn't an amount of rent outstanding. Have you got the money to pay that? The money? There's 5,000 pounds in rent outstanding. They already get the money. From where? From the hustle. We get the brief, brief the letter. Oh, right. The land will get paid already. Yeah. I don't know why they're taking out so. Abdi, a self-employed decorator, and his wife rent the flat from a private landlord. They've lived here for five years, but for the last three, the council have paid the rent. I work on the council is helping me because I don't get enough payments to feed the kids and the house. So I get help from the council, but yeah. It appears the council suspended rent payments pending an investigation into the family's financial and work situation. Abdi insists the arrears have been settled. We believe the rent is paid before the court. Yeah. That's what we believe our council tell us. Yeah, no, no, now we have to move out legally. So that's nothing we can do. It's not fair. You get paid and uh, we have to move out. So. Uh, we have to move. <laughs> Regardless of Abdi's claims, Paul is legally bound to execute the writ. Abdi, his heavily pregnant wife, and their five children are now homeless. Have you been to the council? Yeah. What do they say? They say they pay they the money. But will they rehouse you now? We don't know. Um, I'm going to take them to the hospital. We're going okay. To... Fine. You've, you've got the warrant, haven't you? I gave you the paper. Yeah. Take I'll that with you. Yeah. And take my card and they can ring me. Yeah, I'll get that one. A council worker, aware of the family's rent arrears situation, arrives at the flat. She's armed with information that she hopes can prevent the eviction. We've got the evidence that hasn't been paid to the landlord. Yes. Are you with the hard code? Hard code. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me pass to you this gentleman, yeah? He's from High Court. She asks Paul to speak with Abdi's solicitor. Hello. Now, the landlord decided, for whatever reason, and I'm not party to that, to change it to, a, to the High Court. Fine, thank you very much. The solicitor, the solicitor obviously wasn't aware. 
He understands the High Court situation. The writ confirms the debt is outstanding. Abdi's solicitor accepts nothing can be done to prevent its enforcement. They said they've paid. The, the council have been paid the arrears. So all this might have been totally unnecessary. That'd be a tragedy, wouldn't it, really? It's a scenario Paul's seen before. The landlord loses patience in waiting because he's fobbed off constantly by everybody, so he applies for the eviction order. In this case, the lady from the social services said that the benefits payment has now caught up and it has been paid. We're not aware of that, and the landlord obviously is not aware of that. Concerned for the family's welfare, Paul gives the couple his mobile number. 82. 8-1. That's it. My name is Paul. Right. Paul, 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 Paul. Yeah. I don't want you to panic. Go to the council, make arrangements. The council might pay to move you. They might do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, see you later. OK, fine. Now we're going to the council to see if they can do something for us. Hopefully we'll get something from there. Oh. Heavily pregnant, Abdi's wife heads to the housing office with the children and the council worker. Lights, doors, everything out. The enforcement team secure the flat. Yeah, of course, I'm angry, but what can I do? If I get anger, maybe I can lose my control, so I don't want it to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing I can say, so. My hope was we'll find something good, better than this. For Abdi, his family and his unborn baby, the future is very uncertain. A recent survey found that nearly 20% of apprentices are not being paid the wages they are entitled to. Many were earning less than the equivalent national minimum wage for their age. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and trainee Ian Taylor are in Cambridgeshire. They're here to collect a debt of over £9,000 from the owner of a stud farm. Right. You're not a fan of horses, are you? No, I'm terrified of them. They're too big. The debt is for wages owed to a former apprentice. Stuart and Ian's High Court writ... There we go, horses. horses. ..means that if the debtor can't pay, they have the power to remove goods to sell at auction to cover the debt. You're going to be all right with all these horses? Going to have to be. The boss wants to get this one, doesn't he? There's vehicles everywhere. The farm is a complex maze of outbuildings and driveways. It's not clear which belong to the business. Trying to figure out, is that their house? Uh, there appear to be two properties on the farm. The problem is, Stuart and Ian don't know which is the debtor's home. Hello? Hello? If they can't find the debtor or identify their home, they can't collect the debt. There's kitchen, bedroom and everything in there, so I think that's their house. This is just sort of uh, staff accommodation. But there's no house numbers, is there? We've still got uh, Christmas decorations up. I don't know if that's a good sign if anyone still lives here. Hardest part of the job, I reckon, for me, personally, is not speaking to people. Is putting in those hours and there's nobody there. It must be a house number or something. And knowing that you're going to have to report back to the office that you haven't managed to speak to that person. We can't confirm this address. We're not 100% sure that this house is linked to this address, this could be our house. 
and that could be our business there. Um, but we can't confirm it because we can't speak to anyone. So what I'm going to do is just check with the neighbours. There's no one around here. No one here either. Nobody wants to speak to us today. We've been here half an hour now. Um, uh, there's been no sign of life anywhere. Just as they're about to leave, some people arrive. Hello. Here's Mr. McCracken, High Court Enforcement Agents, here to execute a writ. It turns out that one of them is the owner. Right. Um, I don't have that right. If the debtor can't pay, Stuart and Ian will have to seize any assets they can. And that includes the horses. We have got some assets on the property, so we'll just do a quick check and find out. They've already spotted a horse box and a car. They'll be far easier to seize than the horses, but Stuart and Ian can only take them if they belong to the debtor. Hi, mate. Can someone do a HPI for me, please? A HPI check is very important because it not only does it secure the value of the vehicle, but it also tells us who actually owns the vehicle, because if it's on finance, the defendant doesn't own the vehicle. It's the finance company that has secured money on that vehicle. So it is important that any asset that you do see, um, you need to do a HPI check on it. Both vehicles are free of finance, so Stuart seizes them as security against the debt. Right, do you have a quick chat about, about this outstanding balance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, the total amount that we've got is £9,450, and it's a high court rate. Right. I can pay, um, 4,500 now. Right. And, um, and then pay the rest as a win. I mean, I can make a, a, a... A box transfer. Yeah. Right, OK. I can do that now. Right, OK. When the defendant has offered to pay half the amount up front, it's great, obviously, cos we're trying to get some cash. Um, but you need to find out about the, with regards to the other 50% of the outstanding balance, because we need to explain to the claimant where's the rest of the money coming from and when is this going to be paid. Stuart calls the office. Hi, Gary, it's uh, Stuart, you all right? She said she can pay four and a half now and then pay the remaining amount within 14 days, and we have got assets to seize here. I just need to get confirmation of that agreement. Speak to you in a second, bye. What's the actual outstanding money for? It's a long story. Is it? Um, I um, um, took on a young lady as a, an apprentice. Yeah. And was paying her um, what I thought was the right amount of money, which at the time it was. Yeah. And then, but after the second year, it was supposed to go up to um, national minimum wage. Yeah. And uh, I didn't. I didn't know. Well, well that's OK. But unfortunately, I'm, I'm my fault, but I deliberately haven't paid it. I've been... Wanted to wind them up. Yeah. It's not, it's not the person who's the claimant, it's the mother that's the problem. It's been nearly a year now, and I've just really given her a hard time. The office calls Stuart back. The claimant's accepted the debtor's offer, but collecting the payment is easier said than done. Sure, can. It's a problem with being out in the sticks, isn't it? No signal from anywhere. That's the biggest thing with technology. That chip and pin machine is great, isn't it? It makes our job so much easier. But when you're in the countryside like this, you get no signal. Then the debtor's card is declined. Oh, I need to ring the bank. I'd like to make uh, a payment, please. Must be immediate An immediate payment. one, please. Thank you. They won't get there till tomorrow. Okay, can you get them to authorise the payment and we can do a chip and pin? I've got one bar of signal, so let's see if it works. 
Oh. Just tuck your pen into there, please. Done. Yeah. Right, that's gone through. That's your card there. Just a quick scribble there, just to confirm the arrangement. The remaining amount. OK, and that's it completed. Right, thanks for everything. See you later. It felt good to get that one, knowing that it was not just unpaid wages to an apprentice, but it all came down to a personal grudge with the apprentice's mother. No, I think uh, the High Court fees will make a thing for ever doing anything like that again. Onwards and upwards, on to the next job.